What's up guys? Today we're gonna to discuss the Fast Eddie triple stack from Spot Hog, a site that you probably can't even get your hands on due to supply and demand. Here we go. Spot Hog is known for robust, built for war, sites that are heavy duty. Uh, and the first thing we're gonna talk about is what I don't like about the Fast Eddie XL. This is a six inch dovetail. This thing weighs one pound. This thing's heavy. That's a lot of weight. Other than that, there's a lot of strengths. Let's go through piece by piece. So Obviously, if you're running a new Matthews V3X with the bridge lock, you don't have to use this piece. You can slide this out and put it right in through the riser, which is super handy. And now Spot Hog is coming out with an attachment here, which will give you more windage adjustment on your housing. They just posted, uh, at the time of this recording, they just posted to their socials that they came out with this bracket. You put this bracket on, it's a universal fit for all their sites, and it's now going to allow you more windage adjustment. That's gonna be huge for those running the bridge lock. Like myself, I ran into where I was basically out of windage to the right and I needed more room. And the reason why I was running out of room is because the ring, and I, this is the actual site that I was running, my ring was actually running into here. So I think Spot Hog's coming out of the way to mitigate that. I don't have one in hand. I can't review it yet. We will tinker with it when we can. But obviously these, these archery companies are trying to flex and help mitigate some of the things that are coming up because Matthew's changed the game with the bridge lock. I think the bridge lock's here to stay. And if you haven't got a chance to try it, you'll probably agree with me once you check it out. You can run this direct mount on the side of your bow rig. This is a six inch dovetail. Historically, I don't really care too much for dovetails when you're doing a direct mount, just because you better sharpie that. You don't want this to move when you're in the field. And the last thing I'd wanna see is my sharpie mark, maybe over here or something while I'm hunting. If that moves at all, you're in trouble. I mean, you can lock it down. There's these little knobs right here that give you options as far how far to slide out. Um, I hate to admit it, but Josh Jones is right. The further you put this site from your riser, the more it will magnify your torque. If you are an amazing archer and you don't torque, then you got nothing to worry about. But I noticed when I ran it, it completely extended. I was like, oh, wow. Um, that really magnified my torque. Just something to think about. I guess I'm in the camp. I'm I'm in the camp of bring this site as close to the riser on your bow as possible. It'll keep your sight tape able to go out as far as possible, which is always a good thing in my opinion, uh, especially for follow-up shots, especially for tack and things like that. All in all, it's a great site. It's really built tough. The first thing you're gonna want to do on this site is you're gonna wanna sight it in. So you have your three pins right here in a vertical plane. I'm a huge fan of vertical plane. It offers more of a sight picture. I think you'll be more accurate and it's, it's a better application for hunting. It's covering up less of the animal. You can line up your vertical pins on the animal and go from there. The thing that Spot Hog did and that you guys are probably all aware is each pin is individually adjustable. So you really can fine tune those three pins to to fit your need. Short draw length people who don't shoot very fast bows like me, you're probably gonna run, even if you put that bottom pin in the very bottom position, which we'll show you how to do in a second, you probably can't, I mean, you're probably gonna end up with a 20, 30, 40 movable or a mover. And so the 20, the 20, 30, 40 is fixed, and then you can slide down there. And I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about the nuance of sliding down and how that pen gap kind of changes the further you go down the sight tape, just something to think about. But for the bigger view, this thing's awesome. I love the looks of it, I love the feel. We'll go from there. The ring, the MRT rings is kind of something that Spot Hog says in their literature that you know it should help you know, center your peep and your housing. They have a bunch of science behind why the yellow, green, yellow ring, but it does come off and it comes with other attachments. This is something that I would probably choose over that. Good to go. So the first step into this is sighting in your bow using the Spot Hog sight tape or scale tape. And so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna loosen this right here, crack that to where it's loose and this dial can spin and you're gonna want to move this up until you find where 20 yards is hitting with your top pin. Once you found 20 and you're confident that's your 20, you're gonna cut one of these pieces of tape out and you're gonna put it right on your 20. 
and then from there you're going to back out to 60 yards and you're going to keep working your way down this scale until you find the exact number that matches up. In this instance, for me, I found 20 and then I ended up moving all the way down to number 27. And I had to actually take a picture with my phone and zoom in because these are printed small. So once I had that 20 marked on my top pin, I used my same top pin and I slid down until I hit 27 on the scale, hit bullseye at 60, that's my sight tape. And so I went and cut that out, put it on. So I only use the top pin to find my sight tape. And it's really imperative that you find the exact sight tape. I would take a few days to do it. Maybe if you're not shooting consistently, or maybe if it's windy, or maybe you're just not, maybe you're in, um, you're not in the zone, you're, you're kind of in a, a slump shooting, that's not the time to get your sight tape dope. But um, maybe try it a couple days in a row, make sure you're getting consistent numbers. And then if you're like, okay, 27 is my sight tape, good for you, put it on. Once you do that, it's gonna come green, yellow, green. And the pen sizes are going to be 19 thousandths or 10 thousandths if you buy it off the shelf. So that means like, all three pins will be 19,000 or all three pins will be 10,000. You're gonna want to, if you have time and it's gonna take Spot Hog at least six months, you can custom order. And what I would recommend doing is maybe your top pin, 19,000, your second pin, 19,000, and then have that bottom pin be 10,000. That's gonna be really something smaller that you can focus on at longer distances. It's, it's, it's more appropriate for further distances. And that's what I would do in this instance if I was gonna custom order, but this one's off the shelf, so they're all 10,000s. Before I put my sight tape on, is I'm gonna take and I'm gonna crack this guy right here. And so you're gonna have this lifted up like that. This is your three indicator dials. Before you put your sight tape on, Spot Hog recommends that you put like a piece of tape over it. Take a piece of yellow sticky note and just stick it on there and then you can kind of set that down nice and gentle because basically you don't want your indicator pins like smashing down into your sight tape you want them to like just kind of barely touch be delicate on where you kind of put this find the nice little sweet spot where it's clearly obvious what yardage you're at but it's not going to interfere with your ability to slide once you kind of figure out that sweet spot another thing i like to do is i like to leave myself a little bit of room here so this can kind of kind of go down or up i like to go right in the middle that way if i'm off a yard i can leave my sight tape on and then crack that and move it up so maybe i'm shooting at 50 yards and i notice that uh, i'm a little bit hot at 50. i i need to move my sight or my indicators all up one yard so start in the middle, stay in the middle, and that will give you some room down the road to make some final adjustments as you fine tune your sight tape. And I'm always fine tuning sight tapes for a couple of months, usually in the spring, and then by summer I'm very, very, very much dialed. So let's assume I have the appropriate sight tape selected. All the yardages are exact. My in three indicator pins are not smashed down on the tape. I've left myself enough room. I'm in the middle of this dial right here so I can, if I need to, I can move up or down. Then I can adjust each individual indicator to match what I want. And in this instance, I would probably move, when my top indicator is on at 20 yards, my middle indicator is at 31 and my bottom one's at 41. Let's say I don't like those odd numbers. I could easily adjust each individual pin by using a small Allen, 1 16th Allen. You can crack that right there and make the adjustment right here. So I'm just gonna crack right here. And it's not, it doesn't take much guys. And then I can move down and now I'm directly on at 30 yards. And my bottom indicator right here, this bottom one's at 41. I don't want my third pin to be at 41. I want it to be at 40. Just say I'm doing that so I can move it up to 40 and we're good to go. Theoretically at this point, my top pin is definitely 20 yards and my top pin can be my, my slider or my floater. All of them could be technically, but I need to inspect. So the first thing you wanna do is walk out and shoot your middle pin and make sure that it matches up. So in our instance, or our example, it's at 30. So I'm gonna walk out to 30. Let's say I shoot out to 30 and I notice I'm a little bit low. Okay, 
Well, then I need to move that individual middle pin down a little bit. I'll show you how to do that. And you're gonna wanna do that with your bottom pin as well. So in this setup for elk hunting, I would have it set for 20, 30, and 40. You could do 20, 35, and 50, or you could do 20, 40, 60. You can, there's enough travel in here where you can really make these set up to exactly what you want. The nice thing is, is for me, if I do 20, 30, 40, if the elk is under 40 yards, I'm not dialing and I can gap shoot if I need to. And that's really applicable to hunting out west, which is why I love this site. In order to adjust, let's say the middle pin or any pin for that matter, these three holes right here are your individual pin set screws. So this one back here is for your top pin. And this middle one is for your middle pin. And this one down over here is for your bottom pin. It doesn't take much, it's just a set screw. So just crack it like a quarter turn and now you can adjust. So you're gonna come in from here, crack it. And then in the bottom, the top one is for your top pin. The middle is for your middle and the bottom is for your bottom. So you can literally fine tune your 20, 30, 40, or let's just say your top, middle and bottom. And there's a significant difference in each one as far as where you want them for what you're trying to do. Here's the part where I hope I don't lose you guys. If this is set for 20, 30, 40, and you want your bottom pin to be your mover, you crack this and you can slide. It says my top pin 65, my middle pin 72, and my bottom pin is 80. Is that precise? In theory, it's gonna be pretty close. What I would probably do is keep my, either my top pin or my bottom pin as my main primary slider. And anytime I'm past 40 yards, I'm gonna to try to use the same pin and treat it like an individual single pin type slider. I'm not gonna do gap shooting or anything like that in different hunting scenarios. That's something to consider because as you guys know, as your sight tape goes down in yardage and you go down to the bottom of your sight tape, it's, it's gonna start spreading out. You're losing momentum, you're losing speed. Just keep in mind that if you wanna shoot your sight as far as you can absolutely shoot, you'll wanna end up using your bottom pin, but you probably need to inspect what you expect at the practice range and just make sure to pay attention. Are those gaps the same the further I go down my tape? Let's talk about micro adjustment. You have micro adjust wind. It's super easy. You're just going to crack this right here. And then this dial, you can move it clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on if you wanna go right or left. It's very fine. And so like if you were shooting at 50 yards and you were maybe two inches to the right consistently, you would wanna just do a, maybe a one, two, three or four clicks at a time, shoot again, three or four arrows and check it that way. Once you find the sweet spot and then you can just cinch that down, super handy. That way you're not having to make any big changes to your sight. The other thing to think about is that you have a lot of different adjustments in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take, pop this housing off and show you if you need more windage to your right or left, if you're left-handed or right-handed, depending on you know what bow you're shooting, how the cams are oriented. The windage is usually set up just a little bit different you know, from bow to bow. But this piece right here comes off and then you have this little bracket that you can kind of manipulate. I'll just take it off since we're doing a video, do it proper. If we can flip that over. You have some room to make some adjustments is what is, is what I'm trying to get at. Let's talk about, there's a spot to screw in a light. Where legal, you can add light to your uh, fiber, your optic, and, and brighten up your sight. It just screws in right there. Take these off right here and move this up or down. What you wanna do is be able to give yourself as much room to shoot as far as you can with your equipment and adjust this to, to fit where it suits you best for your style of hunting. Um, there is some third axis play that you can do on these two screws right here. And that's gonna be tightening one side and loosening the other. We've done videos in the past with Spot Hogs way of doing it. It's not as good as like a black gold where you can kind of just shoot it in like on a hill, like a steep hill and, and see what your arrows are doing and just do a, a quick little, you know, it's a set screw and then a small little turn will get you that third axis. This one's not as easy. You gotta loosen one side, tighten the other back and forth to figure out. It, you're gonna have to, to tinker and, and I think you guys are okay with that. My main concern with this Fast Eddy triple stack is the size of the housing. It's significantly bigger than your traditional Fast Eddy. And so you're gonna wanna probably run a bigger peep if you're into matching up your peep and the ring. 
Some people like a little daylight in their circle. My peep didn't jive very well with this when I installed it. And so that's something that we can measure it real quick without the ring. Inch and seven eighths, about an inch and seven eighths. And um, this is kind of like your standard size with Spot Hog. This guy, and I'll take the ring off just so we can measure it, is two inches. It's definitely bigger. Maybe you have the Fast Eddie, maybe you have a dovetail, you have the two pin, and you're like, man, I would really like to run the triple stack. They have conversion kits that you can order from Spot Hog. I think it's 165 bucks, and you can basically just get the housing kit switched over. Maybe you have a Fast Eddie XL two pin, and you're like, I wanna swap it out. Get a hold of Spot Hog, I'm sure they can do that. And if you're gonna custom order anyways, or get a conversion kit, might as well tell them exactly what you want each pin to be. Again, I recommend 19,000, 19,000, 10,000 for the bottom one, but you'll have a lot of room, a lot of adjustability. So for first axis adjustment, uh, Josh Jones calls it the railing, and we want the rail to match up with the string, that first plane. It's really important, in my opinion, to have micro tune adjust on that, especially as you shoot past 50 yards, to have that first plane lined out. There's no way to really adjust that here, like versus a black gold where there's like a little driver that you can kind of manipulate and move it just just slightly so there's no first the second axis adjustment would be your bubble on this site and there's ways to adjust that for sure and you want to do that when you're setting up your site a hundred percent and then your third axis adjustment is these two screws on the back here and it's a loosening tightening depending on which way you need to go to adjust your third axis. So it's it's something that you can't really just shoot and make adjustments on the fly. You probably wanna do a plumb bob deal and go like a door jam trick and have um, a ham ski tool on there. And there's lots of videos out there that we've done in the past on how to do that. So that's not this video, but you can do that with this. All in all, Spot Hog makes really good equipment. Really robust from a elk hunter's perspective. The three pins makes more sense than the two pins. I wish the housing was just a little bit smaller by a couple of eight, that would be awesome. I wish it came with the windage adjustment that they just designed now. I wish all of them came standard because you'll need a little bit of adjustment if you're gonna run that through the bridge lock. Again, step by step, that sight tape is so important that you get that dialed before you worry about all the individual dials and pins. So the price for this site is this continue to support your archery companies man they're awesome they're just like us and be patient and you'll get your hands on your equipment eventually this is a good option for a lot of you elk hunters who want to go vertical pin i recommend this over pins that stick out to the side and we hope to do more reviews on more sites keep coming back to the channel click the subscribe button if you're into geeking out on archery always be tinkering and we'll catch you on the next one